Most people buy hot hatches because they offer a blend of practicality and high performance. But when it comes to performance, there's only one place to settle the score, and that's on the track. We'll be pushing these three hot hatches to their limits, torturing tyres, engines and brakes. The burning question we want answered is this. Which of these three takes the top podium spot? Well, compared to its rivals on a tight, twisty track like this, the steering in the Golf is a little bit over-assisted and just a little bit light. You can't really get a feel on the front wheels, which in the scheme of things, doesn't really add to a confidence-inspiring lap. The gearbox in the Golf GTI is nice and light, which in an around town situation makes the car really easy to drive. The trouble is that without rev matching and being quite so light, it's really hard to distinguish between gates and sometimes you'll find yourself going for the wrong gear. Looking at the numbers, it might seem like the Golf GTI is down on power, but this is a really happy little engine. It's got a lot of torque down low and it's really happy to rev. So as an all-rounder, it works really well. I think for the average buyer who's not going to hit the track, they're probably still going to enjoy driving the GTI a hell of a lot. I mean, this is a really fun car at 7 tenths, but if you're trying to nail those lap times, you're probably going to need to look somewhere else. The beast from the east, the Honda Civic Type R won our last hot hatch comparison. The steering in this car is very, very good. It's got the most feel of all the cars here. It's pure, it's mechanical, and it really helps you engage with the car on the racetrack. When it comes to power delivery, the Type R is very nice. It's got an awesome limited slip differential, but it's this VTEC engine that really works for me. The i30N has a better low end and mid range, but this VTEC top end is like a two stroke power band. It is so addictive. The Type R's got a really good chassis too. The suspension is very well sorted. It's firm and it sits super flat through the corners, but these strengths on the racetrack can be weaknesses on the road, as we've discovered. All three cars have six speed manuals and like the i30N, this one's got throttle blipping or rev matching, but unlike the Hyundai, you can't adjust it. It's a pretty hardcore manual, this one. It feels like every gear just sneaks into place perfectly. On the racetrack, the Type R has virtually no flaws. Yeah, it's a little firm at times, but the brakes are so solid, the gear shift is perfect, and the way it puts its power to the ground, it's just undeniably awesome. All three cars have around the same quickish steering ratio, but the i30N has more feel and feedback than the Golf. I actually love the way it steers, but it's certainly not as in your face as the Type R, which really gets its power down way better than the other two. The i30N has by far the best low and mid-range torque delivery, and easily the best exhaust note here. I also love the six-speed shifter on this Hyundai. It's way more positive than the Volkswagens, but not quite as foolproof as the Hondas. So there's no doubt Hyundai's first hot hatch is a great car. But to be honest, I thought I'd be more impressed by it on the track. As our reigning racetrack champion, it was no surprise to see the Civic Type R top the lap times. It just felt stronger and more resolved in almost every respect. But the Hyundai i30N wasn't too far behind. The Golf GTI was the slowest, but let's remember it has significantly less power than the others. After running all three cars on private and public roads, each of them stood out for different reasons. But ultimately, it was easier than we expected to pick a winner. How much fun was that? I just want to keep driving these cars all day, every day. But correct me if I'm wrong, that Civic Type R is unbeatable on the racetrack. Yeah, look, on the track, mate, there's no denying it. And the times don't lie. It's a hard charging car. The grip in the corners is absolutely phenomenal. A little bit hard on the front tyres, but geez, it's a good thing. It is track weapon, no doubt. How can you go past a five year warranty and all that technology there in the i30? Yeah, you've got a really good point there, Marty. And let's not forget that five year warranty extends to coverage on the racetrack. Yeah. 
Sounds like we're unanimous. Well, I guess we have a new hot hatch champion, the Hyundai i30N.